Hey, Tina. Oh, I thought you said you were just taking off for a short trip. I am. I'll be gone a couple of days. Yeah, you sure packed enough stuff. I don't think I packed that much when I went to Italy. I know. I just didn't have time to pick out everything, so I just threw everything in. Why the big rush? There's no rush, really. It's not like I'm trying to get away from anything or anyone. Court has the kids, and I just need a few days to think and clear my head. So where are you going to be? Mom's going to want to know in case she has to t get in touch with you for an emergency or something. Right. I'll tell you, and you can tell Vicky, but no one else, okay? Don't you want me to tell Uncle David, too? No. You can't, especially not David. What do you think you're doing? Hello, David. What are you doing, Dorian? Just a little digging. And I hit pay dirt. Yes, David. I finally know what you're up to. Sloan. Clint. Is it true that you suddenly called off your wedding to Becky? Yes. Yes. And that you told her you're going to marry another woman? Yes. Yes. Hey. Get up. Sloan? Sloan, dear God, are you all right? What are you trying to do to him? You must be the other woman. The one he left Vicky for. Do you realize you could have killed him? Who are you? This is Clint, Vicky's ex. Oh. oh, Sloan, please, this is insane. It has gone too far. You have got to clear this up. That's it, yeah. Okay. Okay. We go. Come on. Oh, get oh, oh, no. no! Mula! Mula! Got Mula! Mula! Got Mula! Mula! I'm here. Max. Got his nose up here, and I wish I weren't. <laughs> this elevator's burning up. Yes, I copy, but the fire's getting hot, and I'm busy, so over and out. Come on, baby, I gotta get you out of here. Come on. I can't go. Yes, you can. <laughs> no, listen to me. I want you to get out of here right now. Are you kidding? I'm not leaving without you. This elevator shaft's gonna go up any minute. You gotta get out when you can. Luna, get up. <laughs> I can't. Get up. I can't put any more weight on the elevator. I the can't. cable may snap. I can't only reach so far, so baby, you gotta get up, I... and you gotta walk to me. No, you gotta do it. Yes, you can. I'm saying you I can. can. Luna, get up. It's the only way out of here. Come on, baby. Just stand up. Stand up and walk to me. Stand up and walk to me, please. It's the only way we can get out. Come on. There is no way I'm leaving without you. None now, none ever. Now, come on, darling. Hurry up. You gotta stand up. That's the only way either of us is getting out of here alive. Come on. That's it. That's it. Come on. Pull yourself up. Dude, you're doing it. Come on. You're doing good. You're doing good. Come on. Oh. All right, baby. Come on. All right, darling. Yes. Okay. Yes, you got it. Come on. You're doing it. Oh. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. 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 Baby, you're gonna have to walk. You're gonna have to walk. It's the only way I'm gonna reach you. Come on. Just take a step. You can do it. I know you can. Come on, Luna, you're gonna have to walk, please. Come on, 
Damn few people die from taking one punch on the chin, General. You do not know what you are talking about. Do you have any idea what you have done here? Do you always go around hitting people? Oh, please. The last thing I want to hear right now is a lecture from Sloan Carpenter's girlfriend. From where I stand, you're just as rotten as he is. Clint. No. After what you've done to Vicky, the two of you, makes me sick to look at either one of you. Nobody said I had to like you, General. But I still always thought that you had some kind of common decency about you. And I thought that you loved Vicky. I was wrong on both counts, wasn't I? Oh, Sloan, stop this, please. No. Come on. Come on, get up. Don't you want to get up and try and defend yourself? No, you can't defend yourself, can you, General? Not after what you've done to Vicky. Well, smarten up. And don't ever let me lay eyes on you again. Oh, I'll call Larry Waller. No, don't Sloan, do that. you're going to need some kind of medical attention. No, run into doctors and just be suspicious. Sloan Carpenter, I have really had it with all this craziness. Now, none of this would have happened if you weren't trying to keep something from Vicky that she has every right to know. I should have told that man the truth. But you didn't, and you won't. Because you promised me you wouldn't tell anything to anyone. If she won't, I will. Miss Rose. Give that to me. It's mine. And now that I've read it, I finally know what your game is. You stole my keys from the club. You broke into my home. You're going through my private possessions. And what are you going to do about it? Call the police? You could, but somehow, I don't think you will. You're good, David. You're very good. You have one problem, though. I'm just as good and maybe better. I really don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you don't. I never did buy that you were renouncing all claims to Vicky's fortune, though I did think that having a legal document drawn up stating that was a nice touch. Thank you. Of course, Vicky fell for it because, well, she's an emotional fool when it comes to family. Unfortunately for you, I am not. Okay, I get your point. You're very clever. You can outsmart anybody. Three cheers for Dorian. I knew there had to be a reason why you were hanging around Landview. You expected to collect some big dollars. Oh. I especially knew it when I heard that you were bidding on that villa in Spain. Villas don't come cheap. Nothing that interests me comes cheap, Dorian. You know that. What I didn't know is how you expected to afford it until I read this. Oh, my. It's a lot of legal jargon, but it is a letter from Victor Lord's attorneys in Philadelphia to Irene Clayton. It outlines the terms of a trust fund to be set up for their son, which matures when the heir reaches the age of 25. Have I got it right? So far, so good. It's just a wild guess here, but would you be planning on celebrating a birthday soon? You did finally figure it out. But then I thought you might, eventually. Oh, you did? Mm. So now tell me how you're planning to pull this off. I already have. If I can convince Vicky that I'm her brother, the lawyers are going to be a piece of cake. Don't be naive, David. A bunch of hard-nosed trust attorneys are not just going to hand you over a substantial fortune because you have a nice smile and a touching story, even if Vicky does vouch for you. 
The lawyers are going to want tangible proof. I have it covered. How? <laughs> Dorian, come on. You don't really think that I'm going to tell you, do you? Just believe me. I've thought of everything. Everything? Mm. Really? I don't even have to worry about a surprise visit from the real son. Because he's dead. As we discussed at length while you were in prison. You're really very sure of yourself, aren't you? Why not? I've taken care of everything. No, David. Not quite everything. Where is she? She's a cop. She's not a fireman. I don't want her taking chances. Ha oh, ha ha. Will you listen to that? Relax, big brother. She is monitoring radio traffic. <laughs> Besides, the fire is out. They're just clearing away the smoke. This is so crazy. Those elevators passed inspection last month. You know what I just realized? I have never even met your sister, Andy. Well, now you can. I am so sorry about all this. Oh, oh honey. Truly am, and I am so relieved. Oh, and I don't know how many times I've hugged you. <laughs> well, I'm just glad I'm here to be hugged. <laughs> Do you know that the lieutenant from the fire department was furious with you for going down that elevator shaft. Hey, they want to complain? They weren't here, I was. Luna needed me. And then when I heard Andy tell you not to put your weight on the elevator car, I thought, how is he going to get to Luna? I guess you took a big chance and the elevator car held, right? I didn't go into the elevator. I don't understand. I mean, how could you get to Luna? She came to me. Luna. I, I, I walk. I walked to him. Oh, sweetheart. I know. <laughs> I forgot to do it. It wasn't a pretty sight. Believe me, it wasn't, but I did it. I walked to him. <laughs> the whole point of my going to Vicky's cabin is, is to think and, and get a grip on things on which I need a grip. And I really can't do that if I have a lot of distractions. And David would be. One of. Oh, here they are. <clears throat> well, uh, I bet Uncle David's gonna miss you. Oh, he'll adjust. And he has the whole family to keep him company. Oh, I'm not sure that's gonna be the same thing. Of course it would be. I mean, that's what David and I are. Family. Sister and brother. Yeah. And besides, once I'm out of sight, the vultures will descend. The vultures? Women. Like Dorian Lord. She's been waiting for a chance to get her claws into him. I know she has had, had this thing for him ever no, since. No, she doesn't. She that's not true. She can't. She Um You said you wanted to get started, so I'll uh I'll grab your bags and I'll put them in the car. Dorian, I am disappointed in you again. Hmm. I can respect a little healthy greed, just like the next guy, but you've really gone too far. I've gone too far? David, you're the one who's trying to scam a fortune. Dorian, you have millions. Lots of millions. Which, by the way, you have the freedom to enjoy thanks to me. And you know what? Now I'm getting the impression that you want part of the little bit that I'm going to get. The little bit? is quite substantial. According to this, the revenue generated by the trust fund comes from stock in a magazine conglomerate, which includes magazines like oh, Independent Woman and others too numerous to mention, which Victor bought just before he died. Actually, the revenue comes from the controlling interest in the holding company, which owns the stock. Better yet. Independent Woman has become one of the most successful publications going, which means that the holding company that owns the stock must be worth millions. 27.8 million, to be exact. Wow. You've done your homework. Always. Now, you want a piece of my action. No, I don't. I'm not as greedy as you think I am. I do, however, have a little problem. David, I don't think I can allow you to inherit that trust fund. Let's just get something straight, Dorian. You don't allow. This is not your call to make. 
It isn't yours either. Not alone, I'm afraid, when it comes to this. We're quite close. As close as, well, brother and sister. Yeah, right. Well, what are you gonna do? You gonna, you gonna blow my cover? You gonna blow away the story that got you off of death row? I don't think so. You really think that you're gonna get it all? Exactly the way you want it. Well, you know, try to look on the bright side. Once I get my money, you'll have your wish. I'll be out of land view forever. You'll go your way, I'll go my way. Everybody will be happy. I wish it were that simple. I really do. It really is. Trust me. Afraid not. Because I know that you're not planning to go alone. You're planning to take Tina with you. No, 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 no. That, David, is something I will not allow. Thirty years ago, we changed the way America... I heard that little speech you gave Tina at the country club. Yes, you remember the one about how Lord Byron and the pharaohs of ancient Egypt all slept with their sisters? Oh, that was so persuasive. Why don't you just cut to the chase, Dorian? You are planning on taking Tina away with you to that villa in Spain. What I do after I leave here is my business. It has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with me. Anything that you do that gets you into trouble worries me. Hey, look, if you're worried about Tina finding out that I'm not her brother, you can relax. I have everything under control. Of course you do. When it comes to Tina, of course. You can fool that little nitwit forever. Vicky is the one that worries me. Vicky? Dorian, Vicky has nothing to do with any of it. Not yet. If you would just disappear after collecting your so-called inheritance, she might well stay out of it. But... If she hears that you have gone off with Tina... Dorian, Vicky still won't know. David, stop being such a fool. She'll hear that you have gone off into the sunset with a woman who is your own sister. She won't stop. She'll come. She'll find you wherever you are, and she will find out the truth. No, she won't. I know, Vicky. You don't. And if she ever finds out the truth, I am going to be in trouble. Big trouble. And that's why, David, you are going to drop Tina. Thanks for giving me a few minutes, Larry. I know you're busy. Oh, uh, anytime. What's up? Well, I wanted to talk to you about Vicky. Oh? You know, this isn't easy to think about, let alone talk about, so I, I guess I just better get right to it. You're not just Vicky's brother-in-law, you're also one of her oldest friends. And I think she's going to be needing you. In fact, I think she's going to be needing all of us. I'm afraid she's going to be in for a pretty rough time. Yeah, I know. Matter of fact, I was planning on stopping by and seeing her tomorrow. Oh, really? You know about Sloan? Of course I do. Frankly, I'm surprised that you know about it. Why? Vicky told me. There's no reason why she wouldn't. I mean, we are still friends, you know. Oh, absolutely. No, I, it's probably uh, best this way. What way? What are you talking about? I mean, it's better to have this all out in the open, even though it, it's very painful. Very painful? Larry, don't you think you're being just a little bit, uh, casual about this? Very painful? Vicky is devastated. Well, of course she is, Clint. It takes time to, to accept the blow, but time to, to learn to live with it. Learn to live with it? What do you mean, learn to live with it? Larry, how can you expect Vicky to just accept the fact that Sloan Carpenter left her for another woman. Dad. 
I know what you're trying to do. You want to spare Vicky. You don't want her to go through the pain of having to watch. But honestly, do you think it's going to make things easier on her? In time, it will. No, it, it's hurting her. She loves you. And to tell her this kind of lie that you love Beverly and want to marry her, that is just plain cruel. She is better off not knowing. <sighs> Sloan. How can you make that decision for her? I can tell you, if I were Vicky, I would want to know. And Beverly's absolutely right. I can't do this any longer. It's wrong. And that's what I came over here to tell you. Sloan, listen to him. Please. You are tormenting yourself and all the rest of us, too. What you're doing to Vicky, Dad, what... what what all of us are doing to Vicky is, it's just unfair. She deserves to know the truth. She's earned that right with her love. She's earned the right to be spared this kind of misery. No, Sloan. I won't do it anymore. If you won't tell Vicky the truth, I will. All right, here. Well, what are you doing? I have a right. I have a right to die as I wish. Seems you disagree. No, no, Dad, I'm not saying that. Respect my last wish. Or call Vicky right now, but in front of me. Look me in the eye when you betray me. Do me that courtesy. Go on, Andrew. Call. Tell Vicky the truth. Right now. You know I can't. You know I can't go against you now. No matter what I think. Thank you. But I still believe that what you're doing to Vicky is wrong, and I hate being forced to be a part of it. And so do I, Sloane. You know that. Let, let us do the right thing here, please. This is the right thing for Vicky. She's better off. I know that. Sloan Carpenter, for a man who is supposed to know so much, sometimes you don't know anything at all. Vicky doesn't need to watch me die. She doesn't need to be here watching as this thing inside me grows and turns me into something she won't even recognize. I couldn't bear that. Don't you understand? Show some mercy. Let her believe I've left her for you. Let her remember me as the man I was. I, are you gonna, how are you going to do this? Even if we don't say one word to Vicky, she's going to find out eventually. I mean, she's going to know something's wrong when there's no wedding. Oh, Sloane, you are not going to be able to hide your illness indefinitely. Dad, the way I see it, Vicky's going to find out no matter what you do. No. No, she won't. I've seen to that. That sounded like you were giving me an order, Dorian, and I don't take orders from you. Then think of it as a very strong suggestion. What I do with Tina is my business. I think it's time that you left. No, David, for the reasons that I've been trying to hammer into your thick skull, it's very much my business, too. Are you out of your mind? You are planning to run away with a woman that you claim is your full sister. That's incest, David. That's the sort of thing that attracts attention. The wrong kind of attention. That is a risk that I'm willing to take. Well, I'm not. <laughs> and here's something that I really do not understand. I mean, why are you doing this? Why are you willing to take this risk? It's not as if you were in love with Shut this up. airhead. Shut up. Shut up. My feelings for Tina are not up for discussion, not by you or anybody else. David, you... Dorian, just lay off. And do not call her an airhead. Oh, my God. 
You think you're in love with her? You're in love with that little... David, you can't be. You are the original Mr. Take Care of Number One. You don't care about anybody but yourself. I think you have confused me with the original Ms. Take Care of Number One, Dorian Lord. You know what, Dorian? That would be a mistake, because I have no intention of winding up unwanted and unloved like you. I'm not going to let you ruin everything for me. No. I'm not going to allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Mm. Oh, yes. Your keys. Come on, Tina, be there. I've got to know if you're leaving town. Joey, hi, it's your Uncle David. Is Tina there? Uncle David? Uh, Tina is... Um, Tina can't come to the phone right now. She's awfully busy. I see. Um, well, that's... it's no big deal. Just tell her... I called. Thanks, Joey. Come on, Tina. I need to know if you're leaving town. Okay, that's her car, and... That's a suitcase next to it. She is leaving town. All right. No need to panic. There's still time. Thank you, Joey. I hate lying to people like that. I know, and normally I wouldn't have asked her to do this, but I, I didn't want to talk to David because I want to get on my way. And when David and I start talking, well, anyway, thanks. It's okay. And remember, don't tell him I went to the cabin, okay? I'll remember. Thanks. Joey, you seemed upset just now when I said that Dorian had a crush on David. Oh, no, um, I wasn't upset. It's just, I don't think Dorian, I, I mean, I don't think Uncle David and Dorian are interested in each other. That's all. I hope you're right. Not that I care if what David does or who he's interested in. Well, in a sisterly way, I would, because I, I care. And I'm family in, in a sisterly way. I gotta go. <laughs> Tina, <clears throat> you're not making a whole lot of sense. Oh? I guess you're right. I guess you are confused about some things. I'm afraid I am. But I won't be. As soon as I just have a little time to think, I'll get straightened out. Bye. I pulled myself up. All right, up. you pulled yourself up. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, and then um, I, I pulled myself up, and then I could hardly see anything because of all the smoke. But um, I could hear Max's voice. He kept talking to me, and he kept telling me that I could do it. <laughs> Darling, he believes in you. Oh, I'm glad somebody does, because I sure didn't. <laughs> But, I mean, Brent, my therapist, he's been telling me all along, you know, the same thing that Max has, that I can do it if I just let my mind believe it. The muscles are ready. And your muscles were ready today. You just needed motivation. Well, yeah, fire's, fire's pretty good motivation, <laughs> I'll tell you. Luna, I, uh, I was just on the phone to your physical therapist. I, I thought he should know about this. Oh, yes, Brent should know immediately. Yeah, well, he says that he thinks this is a real breakthrough and he would like to see you tonight. Well, um, sure. Sure, if he thinks he needs to see me tonight, that's fine with me. Max, what's wrong? Well, I need to call Brent back and uh, tell him where to meet you. I mean, do I tell him here at the palace, or... I thought maybe I could tell him to meet you at Serenity Springs. And I, I, I know it. I can feel it. You're gonna walk again. It, it, it's just out there, and... I just think that if you're at Serenity Springs, if you're at home where you belong, you'll get better a lot faster. That's all. You believed in me tonight when I couldn't. You had faith that I could walk again, and... and you were right about that. And that saved my life, and... 
Maybe you're right about this, too. Does that mean you're coming back? Yeah, I'll try. I'll come back to Serenity Springs. I will. Do the right thing. You won't be sorry, I promise. That's the truth, sweetheart. It's the right decision. Well, listen, I, I better get back to Brent. I was so happy for you. Yeah. Talk about bad. Turning into good. Max, we've got to see about moving that physical therapy. Hello, Luna. Hello. Do I know you? Uh, not exactly. Look, I, I know this is a really strange way to meet, but um, I'm Max's sister. You're Andy. <laughs> well, oh my God. <laughs> well, yep, you're right. This is a strange way to meet, but it's nice to meet you. Oh, you too. <laughs> well, I, I see you brought this old thing. Caught this thing melted in the fire along with me. Oh, here, let me help you. Oh, no, no, no. I can do this. I can do it fine. Thank you, though. You know, I got a feeling I won't be needing very much of this little contraption anymore. <laughs> oh. Well. Uh, so you uh you're you're you've been staying at Serenity Springs, I understand? Yeah. Well, there's plenty of room there. Oh. You're right. It, look. No, I, I hope this doesn't sound out of line or anything, but uh, when I was standing over there, I I couldn't help but hearing what Max asked you and, and you know, what you said. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so you, you know I'm moving back in, huh? Yeah. And I just wanted to say, um, you've made Max really happy. I'm gonna be looking for a place in town. You're gonna be moving out? Why? <laughs> because of me? <laughs> oh, honey, please don't do that. Max loves having you there, and there's plenty of room, and... Oh, shoot, I'm used to big old families. <laughs> I met your brother, Dylan. Oh, isn't he cute? <laughs> no, I, you, you are welcome to stay there. Thanks, Luna. God, just how I imagined. No, I promise I'm gonna stay out of your way. I know you two are gonna need your privacy. <laughs> I'm so glad you're gonna be with Max again. submitted my resignation from Mindview University. And tomorrow, I'm gonna pack all this up and move out of Landview for good. Before I leave, I'm gonna drop a word or two on the campus uh, that Beverly and I are gonna take a trip around the world. The way they gossip on campus, I'm sure it'll get around real fast, and I know there's gonna be someone who will be eager to tell Vicky the story. Where are you gonna go? You're gonna need medical treatment, you're gonna need nursing care. I mean, you just can't drop off the face of the earth. No, I can't, but the way things have been going the last few days, that would have been my Why choice. Why are you doing this? Why are you making this so lonely for yourself? There are people here who care for you, who want to care for you. Take care of myself. I always have. All I'm saying is that having your family and your friends around could make this easier. I know you mean well. I love you, Andrew. But the simple fact is, there's nothing anyone can say or do to make this easy. And there's just no sense sitting around crying about it. We're all allowed to mourn. I don't believe in self-pity, and I have plans to make. I've checked into a hospice. Uh, there are several good ones, discreet. I'll be getting very good nursing care. Oh, yes, I'm sure you will. Far away from Landview and every single person who loves you. Far away from Vicky. She won't know anything until after I'm gone. It won't work. Andrew's right. There's just so many things that could go wrong. 
Well, anyway, by this time tomorrow, I will have moved out of this town and out of Vicky's life forever. Okay. No, I'll have the lab rerun the tests, and uh, we'll send you the results right away. No, it's no problem. Okay, well, thank you, Doctor. All right, bye-bye. Clint, I'm really sorry, but I've been expecting that call all day, and I really had to take it. No problem. I have to get on downstairs. You want to come with me? No. What? What I want is some answers. What? Well, when I told you that uh, Sloan had left Vicky for another woman, you seemed kind of surprised. Yeah, I was, very. But when I first came in here, from the way you were talking, it sounded as if you already knew that something had happened between them. Well, I think, to be honest, I, I just couldn't believe it. Uh, something like that. It's just so out of character for Sloan to do something like that. Well, that's what I thought when, when Vicky told me. I mean, no matter what other thoughts I might have had about the fella, I thought that he had a streak of common decency about him. I guess that's why I reacted the way I did when I saw him. What do you mean? Uh, well, I just came from his place. I called him up, went over to talk to him. He stood right in front of me and admitted the whole thing right to my face. So I, before I knew what I was doing, I decked him. You what? I decked him. I'm not proud of it, but I decked Cliff, for God's sake. I got to get over there. Wait a minute. What? What's the big deal? Larry, what the hell is going on? As soon as I get to the cabin, I'll be just fine. I'll be perfect. I just need time away from people, especially people who have a lot of influence over my feelings. Because I can't be feeling the things I think I'm feeling. I couldn't. I just need time to think alone. So I'll be just fine. me confused with the original Ms. Take Care of number one, Dorian Lord. And that would be a mistake, Dorian, because I have no intention of winding up unwanted and unloved like you. Nothing's going on. It just sounds like Sloan might need a doctor right now. For what? I hit the man once. I don't pack that much of a punch. Besides, why do you care what happens to him? He has ruined Vicky's life. Larry. Larry, it's pretty obvious that something is something is wrong here. Now what is it? <laughs> 